What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you rocking with me. Michael here and I have, it's a new quarter, and so we have a new Flaviar uh, tasting box. I'm really excited for this one. This one was actually really, well this choice wasn't tough, but the making the choice was tough. Uh, they had a really incredible selection this quarter. Um, there were a lot of bourbons, some ryes. There was a gin box that sounded really interesting. Um, they had a mezcal, which is something I've always wanted to kind of experiment with. But when I saw this, I knew we had to do it. How do I want to start this? Let's start with the pull tab. I talked about this last time, but I had already kind of gotten into it. So I want to show you guys how it works. You got this pull tab, and it's really tight. You pull it up, and you get... First of all, this little, I'm gonna call it cement. I don't actually know what the material is, but I'm trying to separate the cards here, but you get the cement coaster gimmick. Um, clay, it's probably clay. Um, let's see. You have, what do we got? You get this little card that kind of gives you a brief synopsis of what you have, and then you have the um, sticker cards and the a, B, C cards. And I haven't looked, but on the other side it tells you which spirit uh, corresponds with which, with which letter. And then you have uh, the cards with the stickers on it that have the, uh, the names. Um, I'm really excited for this one. This is a Japanese whiskey tasting box. And there's our three vials. We're going to do three separate videos. So we're just going to do, uh, I guess we'll just start with A. Why not? We'll do A today. I love Japanese whiskey, but the thing that uh, attracted me to this is that all three of these come from distilleries that I have never had. Uh, so these are all brand new to me. I'm really excited for that. My experience with Japanese whiskey is a little bit limited. It's mostly um, the Hibiki uh, whiskeys, mostly because they're the easiest to get. Um, so when I saw this as one of the options, I was, I was really excited to get this box and it couldn't get here soon enough. Um, let's see, so this is A, so let me get the tasting card here. Um, this is, what would that be, 84 proof, so, you know, for a cask strength, it's a little bit lower. You know, a little amber in color, pretty thin, which is typical of Japanese whiskeys, uh, at least in, in profile. Um, they're usually a little bit thinner in taste as well. We're going to do what we always do. I got my shot glass. We're going to try it straight. I do have my rocks glass. Now, I only have one ice cube today, and I want to point that out because... Again, in my, in my limited experience, Japanese whiskeys tend to be more delicate than like a complex scotch with you know eight layers of flavor. So I find that they just need a lot less um, to really uh, unleash the flavor profile. So I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm really excited to try this. Let's dive in, break the seal. I love these little vials too. These are so much fun. Smells really good. Smells really good. Okay. And just because I'm clumsy, I'm gonna put the cap back on. <laughs> okay, so initial reactions. A lot of, um, a lot of alcohol, a lot of astringency, uh, like, like rubbing alcohol. A little bit of the wood, it's not oak though. It's something else. Um, I'm not getting much in the way of smokiness. At this point, I really need to invest in a, a Glen Cairn. I've turned my nose up at them because mostly it's whiskey snobs that are obsessed with them, but it would be a lot easier to get my big schnoz in there if I had a... <laughs> Mini agrees. <laughs> okay, let's give this our first taste. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> very astringent. The first, that first sip, that first hit on the palate is very harsh. Like, like that immediate um, evaporation sensation, that effervescence, but in the alcohol form. So it's not refreshing. It's sort of like a kick to the face a little bit. Um, I'm getting a sweetness of, of some sort, like a like a dried fruit maybe, that kind of, that combination of, of um, 
earthy sweetness that you get from like dried blueberries, something of that sort. I'm not getting a lot on the smokiness. Like it's it's kind of there, but it's it's not forward at all. Um, I wish I could identify what that wood taste is. I can't quite put my can't quite put my finger on it. What that is, but um, let's do the rest over ice. I'm gonna turn down the baby monitor. <laughs> Live TV, folks, except it's not. But I hate editing. That's not true, I like editing. I just don't, I'm lazy about editing. So we got a, just a little ice in there. I'm not gonna waste any time. I don't want the ice to melt uh, too much. Hmm. Oh, man, I really wish I could put my finger on what that is. It's, um. You know what it might you know what it might be? It might be new oak. Maybe that's what's confusing me. It might be new oak, so it's not a charred cask. I also wonder if maybe they're doing new oak with charred chips, which is a technique. Not so much using new oak, but using charred chips is kind of a technique that some distilleries use to speed up the maturation process. So I'm wondering if it's something like that, some sort of combination of, of a new oak and maybe a char, or I've heard in some, with some Japanese distilleries, they're actually um, pumping smoke in and letting it kind of absorb um, into the alcohol as opposed to um, infusing it through a, uh, through a charring process. Okay, off the bat, I can say I think this is one that is is actually does better straight. I'm going to say no ice, um, which is not uncommon with Japanese whiskeys. Uh, again, at least in my experience, um, it's one of the few whiskeys that I almost exclusively drink neat. Uh, and I do think that um, that this one was a little more layered without the uh, the ice. Although I see it now starting to kind of blend, I guess. It's very, it's very strong. It's surprisingly strong for 84 proof. Um, and then what's, what's interesting to me is that it's burning up front as opposed to at the end, which is usually what you kind of have, you know, when you, when you, like if you take a shot and it burns all the way down, um, it's not, it's, the burn is immediate. Like the minute it hits your palate, you feel it. You feel it in your soft palate, in your nose, on your tongue. Um, and then when you swallow it, it's actually pretty smooth at that point. So I don't know, it's very, it's very odd. It's not like anything I can think of that I had before. Um, it's good. I don't, like, I certainly wouldn't turn it down, but I can tell you that it's not one of my favorites. Would you want to smell it? Yeah, I do. All right, let's, I'm going to start with the, um, yeah, the informational card. I feel like card. I could wash my face with this. It's very astringent. Um, let's start with the informational card for the box. Dive deeper into the rich world of, oh, they're all, uh, Nippon, Nippon, Nippon? Nippon? Nippon. I think it's Nippon. Whiskey. So these are all Nippon. Okay. And I, to my knowledge, I don't think I've had one. William agrees. Um, the Japanese booze landscape is teeming with uh, extravagantly different, under-the-radar, rare, and straight-up bonkers spirits. A sake-like whiskey from ex-brandy casks made from rice that had koi carp police its weeds. A Scotland-born spirit from X sherry barrels whose water was filtered through a goddamn volcano. It says. Or a ridiculously rare no-age statement gem from a mythical place. Uh, it sounds like we're making this up, but these are real spirits and they, jubi they jubilate. They jubilate? Jubilate. The Japanese ingenuity and imagination. Okay? 
So what did we try? We tried oh, ohishi. Ohishi? Ohishi. Ohishi. I'm usually really good with um, Japanese words until you put me on the spot. Eight-year-old sherry cask, Japanese whiskey. Um, okay, so it's an ex-sherry cask, and that would explain the uh, that kind of dried fruit uh, that I was getting and and also why I felt like it wasn't a charred barrel because it was aged in a, in a used sherry cask. So that that makes a lot of sense uh, Flavor profiles oak um, Spice fruit which we got floral nutty. Uh, I didn't get rice <laughs> William has a lot to say. This is our life these days. That's right. I'm leaving it in. I don't care It's chatty. It's um three 30 and I'm drinking straight whiskey if, if that one if you gives you any uh, any indication They have smokiness on the upper end of the tasting profile, but I'm really I'm not getting it. I mean, it's there, but I would not say it's the dominant flavor I think the spice fruit definitely stands out more um, the the oakiness stands out more than the smokiness for sure Mm, wow. So the ice cube is melted and it's an entirely different flavor profile. Wow. It tastes like an entirely different whiskey now. Um, not as astringent, which makes sense because you've watered it down. Um, I would imagine we've probably dropped the ABV to, you know, 80 probably uh, or close to it. <clears throat> um, hmm. The um, the smokiness is a little bit stronger. It is a little more uh, forward now that it's diluted a little bit. Uh, less of the dried fruit. And the oak is a little bit subdued because the smokiness is kind of overpowering it, I think. Um, I will say that I liked it better straight, for sure. I think that it was just a little more complex, even though it was super astringent. Um, it was more complex and a little more interesting to drink, but, uh, it's not, not my favorite. It's not one of the better whiskeys, definitely not one of the better Japanese whiskeys I had, but not one of the better whiskeys overall. Um, which I guess is, I don't know. I want to say it's a little disappointing, but it's not because it's all part of the journey. Uh, but I, I'm just, I, I love what some of the things are doing in Japan. And so I just had really high hopes for it, but we've got two more and uh, it smells really good though, now that it's diluted a little. It's gone. I don't want another snip. Oh. Okay, so that was Ohishi eight year old sherry cask Japanese whiskey, 42.1%. Oh no, this is what I want, the stickers. Here we go. Here's our sticker. I've been saving, here it is, all of the uh, test tubes. The nice thing about doing this uh, selfishly is that sometimes I forget if I've had something or what I thought of it. And now I'm able to go back and say, oh yeah, you know? Well, that one's got a little kick to it. <laughs> Hold on, there's still some left. It's still booze. Sometimes I feel like Barney when he's like, hey, someone sp spilled beer in this ashtray. Drinks the ashtray. That's a dated reference. An ashtray with beer, spilled beer in it? Where does that exist? Las Vegas. That's probably it. I'll have to ask Vinny if you can smoke inside of the casinos in Philly and Jersey. All right, that's it for this one. So, okay, first whiskey, eh. You know, it's, the quality is high. Do not let me mischaracterize it. The quality of this is high. You'd expect nothing less from, from Nip and Whiskey. Um, I just didn't love it. It just wasn't uh, that enjoyable. It wasn't as complex as I expected. I, I understand that they're generally delicate, but for, for that level of combination of, of the Japanese Whiskey, X-Sherry, maybe the problem is that eight years isn't that long. Uh, and then you look at the, the flavor profile and they've got, you know, all this stuff with smoke and I didn't even read all this off. Uh, sherry bomb, smoky biscuit, spicy oak, spice fruit, floral nutty rice. 
some of those things were there. I didn't get most of them. And honestly, my other problem, I guess we'll say is that Nippon is kind of expensive. Um, and I take that into account when I'm like, okay, do I like this? Is this something I'm going to go buy? And it's just not, um, it just wasn't quite all there for me. Wouldn't turn it down. Uh, if I was, you know, if we went out for sushi and that was my choice, I would not say no, but uh, it's definitely not going to be one that, uh, that shows up on my shelf. So let me know what you guys think about it. If you've had this before, uh, let me know down in the comments, you know, what your thoughts are on that. If you've had other nip and whiskeys that maybe you can recommend to me again, I think every Japanese whiskey I've had is, um, Hibiki. I'm fairly certain of that. Fairly certain. Uh, so my, my experience is pretty limited, which is why I was really excited for this box. So let me know what you guys thought. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Appreciate you, and I'll see you next time. <clears throat> Post-show deleted scene, and maybe this is because all I've had today is a slice of Costco pizza that I ate five hours ago, but that shit hits like a Mack truck. Like, I am buzzed as a motherfucker right now i can my face is numb my vision is a little bit off so uh i will say one thing for that nip and whiskey even though it's only what did i say 84 proof and like i'm not a stranger to 90 and 95 proof and above drinks uh that hits pretty damn strong so you know if you um if you do find yourself at like a sushi restaurant or something like that and uh, you want to get there with the quickness, you could do worse than the, uh, than the Nippon Ohishi. <laughs>